Hello, I'm Diane Ward, and I am so thrilled to be here today as a representative of Candy Rideout, uh, better still, a friend of Candy Rideout, and to be able to talk a little bit about her, her background, her education, her talent, and you'll get to see more of her amazing work as this, as this film goes on. She uh, was a graduate at the University of Utah, of course, with a double major in education and drawing and painting, and she just took it to tremendously high levels after that. She's in several private collections in the United States and Europe, and she continues to impress. She's won a first place award at the Utah State Fair, and then she taught art in secondary schools, so those students had the benefit of her immense talent and her sweet personality. She's gotten Best of Show in the Provo Freedom Festival, the Best of Show at the Eccles, uh, the Eccles Show in Ogden, Member of Merit Awards, uh, People's Choice Awards, and uh, first place in the holiday plein air, and I could go on and on and on. So whenever Candy competes, she wins. And if you're lucky enough to have one of her paintings hanging in your living room, then you are one of the lucky ones. But Candy is alive and well and painting all the time, so I encourage you to seek her out, to go to shows when she's exhibiting, and to be one of the famous collectors. We're glad to have you with us today, and I hope a lot of you will be painting along. This will be sort of an experiment for all of us, but we'll see how it goes. I thought I would go through the painting process and just give you an idea of how I begin. Start with a sketchbook. So whatever scene we have, I'll do three or four little sketches with the horizon line in a different place. The horizon line is your eye level. And you can see there's some varieties here and then I can choose which composition is the best. In order to decide where that horizon line is, you can take any flat, you can take a canvas panel, any flat item and put it right up to your eyes. So anything above that level, you're looking up at. Anything below that level, you're looking down at. And when this just about disappears, this little canvas panel here, that is your horizon line. So one of the first things you wanna do on your canvas is place a horizon line. This is what we're painting today. You should have a copy of this that you can print off or um, you can just keep referring back to this. But our horizon line is somewhere along here. So wherever your eye level is, that's your horizon line. You probably don't want that coming right in the center of your canvas. So I'm going to mix up a color I can use to just give us an idea of where that horizon line is. So for this, we're going to go about there. And that's all you have to do. I usually to start with a tic-tac-toe sort of pattern and so I'll divide it in thirds. That'll be a third. And then you want your center of interest to land on one of these little intersections here. So as we go along I'll talk about center of interest and how you can get your eye to go to the place you want everyone to see. So if you're outside um, and you all of a sudden see the spectacular scene, you go, I've got to get a picture of that. And you may take a picture. I also work from photographs on occasion, but the better paintings are done outside when you're actually looking at it because the colors are different. Our layout for the palette I usually start with white in the corner because I'm right-handed. I don't want to put, drag my arm through the paint all the time. So I'll put the white in the corner, the warm colors across the top, and the cool colors coming down the, the left-hand side. And then I won't be getting um, <coughs> the paint in my hand or on the brush by accident. So we're gonna start with um, just a neutral color. 
and I use sometimes a little purple and a little yellow together and we'll sketch the uh, composition in that way. So if you have questions, you feel free to jump in. I have a few people here that are painting along with us today and I hope they participate too. So we'll go from there. So for this exercise, I think I want the center of interest to be over here someplace. So it's close to this. And I'm just going to sketch in with paint. And you can sketch in with charcoal, with a pencil, um, but I just start with paint and I use this kind of neutral color because it disappears in the painting as we go. So we'll start out, we've got a great big tree over here. And then there are kind of two little trees there. Another one here and a little something and another tree over here. And then one good composition is almost a Z pattern. So I'm gonna put a Z in here. And there we go, we've got our start. Anyway, so we know the horizon line is here. The trees are gonna be kind of in the background. Usually the sky is the lightest thing. And then your ground is the next lightest because the sky's, you know, the sun's shining on the ground. And then anything upright will be the darkest. So these trees are gonna be the darkest. So I will start out by just blocking in a dark color for the trees. Um, I didn't put green on your list. I have a green out here, but I don't use it very much. Prettier greens are made by mixing blue and one of your yellows or oranges together. So I use ultramarine blue usually and um, one of the yellows. And I'm gonna change these as we go along. But if I want it darker, I'll put more blue in it. Um, as far as a medium, you can use, this is called um, Megilp, which is a really weird name. Um, that can be a medium if your paint is too thick, or you can just use a little of your Gamsol or Turpentine to thin it. and we'll just block in a big area. So this is gonna be a tree. It'll be heavier on the bottom, because the tree has a rounded shape, and the underneath is gonna be darker. So we'll put the darker color at the bottom. Candy, I would have thought that maybe you would do the sky first since the trees are in the foreground and the sky is in the background, but you're not doing that. No, and that's a good question. Um, some artists go from the top of their canvas and paint the sky first and move down. So that their hand is never in the wet paint. I usually put the darkest things in first and then move from there and end up with a lighter for the sky. But that's a really good question because everyone approaches it a different way and there's no right or wrong way. So this little Z pattern here, that's just a quick way of making the composition work. Um, you don't need very many brushes. I'm going to be using, this is a number eight that I suggested you have.
there's so many different kinds of brushes out there. I mean, they're narrow, they're flat, they're fan brushes. Do you just kind of figure that out as you go or are there rules? There are no rules on brushes either. Um, I use what's called a long flat and you can see that it's, the bristles are relatively long and if you look at it on the side, it makes a little chisel edge. So you can get a very fine line with it or by putting it this way, it's, you're getting the fat side. And I find that I can use this long flat for every kind of a figure or a landscape or, or just about anything. So I like the long flat ones. And it's like anything else, you get what you pay for. So the more expensive the brush is, the nicer it will be probably. So you're not using any thinner or anything? Um, a little teeny bit of Gamsol I put in that just to start okay. with. Okay, but well, we want this to be really pretty dark at the bottom. So I mixed up a color that is mostly blue but has a little yellow in it again. And we're going to go from there. Also to make this a little bit interesting, here we're connecting the Z pattern. I'm going to make the hillside come out a little here and this tree starts right here. Um, I also want to make sure that your eye ends up right here. So for this, I'm going to put another little bushy tree right down here. I'm going to make that more red just because your eye always goes to a face if there's a face in your composition or the color red. So I tend to put a little red something in everything and this is where it's going to be. So for the red bush, I'm mixing alizarin crimson and a little Indian red. You can achieve the same thing by mixing in some orange in it. Um, and this little tree right here is going to be the red one. You can see that it covers right over what I had there before. So hopefully now when your eye goes to this, it will hit on this. And I'm going to brighten this up a little as we go. Candy? Yes. I see you're always holding that brush on the tip on the end. Right. Uh, if you hold it up like go? up like this, then you're making a drawing. We're making a painting. So we want to be the maestro, the one, you know, kind of leading along. So if you paint with your arm and shoulder, rather than being really picky with your hand, it becomes more painterly, and that's what we're after. What led you to choose oil as your medium as opposed to watercolor? Um, that's a good question too. I started out doing watercolors. In fact, I won the award at BU for the best watercolor artist when I graduated and did that for years. But oil paints are a lot more forgiving. So if you really mess up, you can take a little bit of paper towel and dip it in your Gamsol and it's like an eraser. You can take it right off. Or when you're finished, if there's something that bothers you and it's all dry, you can go right back in and paint over it. So you're not wasting anything. You know, I used to think about the price of the watercolor paper. 
Now I should probably think about the price of the canvas, but I don't. <laughs> So any kind of paper towel will do. You want to wipe off your brush um, every now and then so you're not putting the same color right back on. Um, and then you need to have a little garbage that's close so you're not getting paint on anything. I don't use rubber gloves. Um, I probably should, but I don't. And People aren't really dying of getting paint on their hands, but we try to keep our hands as clean as we can. lighter at the top so you can mix a little more yellow in with your color And I'm starting with a white canvas today because most of you have a white canvas. Sometimes I will tint the canvas a little bit. And you can do that by just a really thin wash. And then wipe it a little bit. It feels like most painters today use those canvas boards. Do you ever stretch a canvas? I don't, but I paint on stretch canvas. I let someone else do it. Hmm. When we're in college, we do all of that ourselves. And a lot of people are using masonite now, canvas? You can paint on just about anything. Um, a lot of people are painting on birch wood. Hmm. I prefer a linen canvas, but for something little like this, it doesn't make that much difference. painting outside and how painting in in the real world is better more gratifying I don't know than photos or sketches you probably don't actually finish a painting if you're painting is that what you call plein air yes plein air is a it's a French term p-l-e-i-n um, and it just means painting outside so when you're painting outside you're going to be able to see colors that you probably couldn't see in a photograph. A photograph will make anything dark almost black, or it'll go the other way, it'll make everything light, more colorful than it really is. Um, so a photo has its limitations. But if you're outside and, and you're looking at what you're painting, you'll be able to see the colors better and see interesting colors in the shadows. Would you ever complete a painting that you were doing plein air in one sitting though? If you go back another day, the lighting might be different. It is. In fact, every, about every 10 minutes, the lighting changes. So I have a painting that's over on the wall. We'll give you a close-up picture of that later. 
that was done in about three hours. Um, mostly I can't do a painting quite that fast, but three hours is still fast for a painting. Try to keep one container with Yamsol in it that I can clean the paintbrush in. I also have one in my right here on my easel that I can use to clean the brush. That cleaner is not a name I'm familiar with. What is that again? It's called Gamsol. And it's made by Gamblin. The reason I like it is because it hardly spills. If you've got turpentine, you're going, you know. <laughs> After about half an hour, you don't know what you're doing. Um, so anyway, I prefer to use that. In this composition that we're using as, a, as our reference, there are no mountains in it, but I think we should have some mountains. So as things get further away, they get bluer and grayer. I'm going to put a little purple in it. If you don't have a purple, red and blue mixed together make a great purple. So let's put just some little mountains back in here. And they're going to be quite light because they're in the distance. this gives an idea of where there's some little mountains. Now at this point I probably will start putting in a little sky and the sky is usually the lightest color on your canvas. I'm going to use Cerulean blue and white. So this is going to be the base color up here. Look up at the sky any time during the day. It is darker as it gets higher in the sky and lighter as it gets toward that horizon line. Gets closer down here to the this 
mountain edge, it's going to be a bit lighter. Oops, you don't need want that. So I'm going to get as close to this mountain edge as I can without getting in it. going to put a couple of little trees there, but can you see that those trees really disappeared? And we can go back over them. That's the nice thing about oil paint. Is we can go back over it and refine that a little bit later. Your studio is such a fun place. Number one, you have so many beautiful things that you've painted yourself on the walls. I noticed you have a lot of books. I think my favorite thing was that you said some of your greatest inspiration is over here on this shelf and it's chocolate. <laughs> she can't paint without she chocolate. Paint without. I know. <laughs> Everyone's got to have a little chocolate. So if you get to a point where you don't know which direction to go, you need to eat a piece of chocolate. So the horizon line and whatever is in the distance, this line is not a sharp edge. So I'm gonna take the brush and keep one side on the mountain and the other side in the sky and we'll see if we can soften that edge. See how make, that makes it more in the distance. Talk a little bit about uh, your choice of oil paint versus acrylic paints. Um, acrylic paints come in about the same colors, but they dry so fast that you can't, you couldn't possibly do this sort of a soft edge with it unless you were really, you know, just working on a tiny area at a time. So it drives me crazy, and I much prefer the oil paint. So the same thing happens with the tree. The soft edge of the tree is going to be this top edge. So we'll try to soften these edges as we go to. If you're a beginner, where would you go? I know there are a couple of really nice art stores. Do you have to go right to, um, there's a Glick, I know, I believe it's on 21st South. 
Can you get oil, good, good quality oil paints at Michael's or where would you send someone to shop? Um, Blick has probably the best supply of art things right now, but they have them at Michael's, at Walmart, at um, Holly Hobby, or there's good old Amazon. You can have it the next day. So a lot of times I'll just do that. Tell us about some of the shows you've exhibited in. Um, well, most of them, well, I, don't know if I couldn't say that either. A lot of the shows are plein air events where we go outside and have just a certain number of hours to complete a painting. Um, Midway has one of those every year, except for last year. And Midway's a good location for a good material, a lot of material up there. I know you, you can paint a yeah, lot up there. You can just paint any direction. In fact, this reference was done from the a Midway location. And right now, there's a great big building right there. So the pasture that we used to love is, is no longer there, but I guess a great reception center. I think there are favorite places in Utah for watercolor artists and oil painters. Midway's one of them. Spring City seems to be one. Do you have other places in Utah you like to go? Um, Zion's. The canyons are terrific. Red Rock is fun. Um, I like the mountains in the winter too. You know, not every place has snow and desert at the same time. So Utah is one of those unusual places where you can see all kinds of um, different formations from rocks and almost, it almost seems like the weather is changing, but. Since this, the light is coming from behind this and, you, and our lightest place is going to be right here, you can also see that along this line, wherever the water is coming, the dark, there will be a dark edge on this side because it's a shadow. And if you don't put that in, you go, mm, something's wrong with this. So we'll put our dark edge in here. So there are different ways you can move the brush. You can do, um, you know, just a little thing that looks like something's growing. We don't exactly know what that is, but it doesn't matter. Um, you can do the scumbling that we talked about before. If you use more paint, you can push the paint around. So I think back here we ought to make it a little darker. And the other thing you want to think about is you don't want to have your painting be all light or all dark. So you kind of have to decide as you're going along, is this going to be, is the ground going to be generally lighter? Or will most of it be in the dark and you'll just have a little bit of light?
if it's farmland, you may have a certain period of time where you're, they're harvesting the wheat. And that's a different look. You can also make some lines that kind of direct your eye towards that. Um, area of focus that you want to have people look at. Al Rounds, who's a famous artist in Utah, does watercolors mostly. But if you'll look really hard at his paintings, he has about five little white places that lead your eye to his center of interest. some of the offerings that Salt Lake has for either aspiring artists or people just interested in art. I know the Zion Show is a big one, and you're always front and center at the Zion's Bank Show. But gallery hops, I mean, I think there are people that think that they would like to do this, that they're a little timid to start. Well, they can go watch this YouTube video for starters and ping along with you <laughs> in the future because this will be available for our viewers for a while. They can do that. The gallery strolls are really fun and you can see a variety of art. Um, they're open all over the cities and they usually have little refreshments. So it makes it kind of nice. Um, yeah, the cheap date. The holiday is really fun because it's for amateurs and professionals. Yes, so the Holiday Art Show is coming up, and it's a nice show. Um, you don't have to live in Holiday to be part of it, so anyone can enter. If you're interested in doing that, they would love to have you participate. The Zion Show is, you have to try out every year, even if you've been in it for 20 years. And isn't it by invitation or no? Um, the attendance of the show is, yes. Yeah. yeah, so not everyone can go to it, but if you happen to get an invitation or a friend asked you to go, that's really something. It's a great show. And it runs the gamut of artistic endeavors. It's uh, not just oil painting, but all kinds of things. Sculpture and watercolor and jewelry. And yeah, it's a great one. They're great wonderful show. to support the arts. So if I get this really dark in the front here, most of the painting actually will be dark. And you will see more detail up here close to.
amazing how far that has come just in the time we've been watching you. Yeah. It's an actual painting. Well, it's still got a ways to go, but thank you. Yes. <laughs> but it shows the possibilities. Yeah, right from the beginning, you should be able to see that you've got some areas that are um, different values. So right up here, we've got our lightest. Down here, the rest of the ground. you could hear that comment but it usually takes a lot longer than <laughs> this amount painting. of time to do a painting so we're tackling a project here we don't know if it'll work or not it's like anything else that a person does that's artistic whether it's playing the piano or and I am NOT a painter but I am a quilt maker and you don't do things overnight So you can see the, the way the brush is skipping over the canvas here, that it still makes an interesting um, texture. And the thicker the paint is, the more interesting it will be as well. So the thicker paint will be up here in the front. So if you mix up colors on your palette and they're horrible, mm -hmm. just wipe your brush off and mix another pile. That happens. If your painting is going to take more than one day, how do you cover your colors or do you try to preserve those for the next day of painting? Um, the colors I have out on the palette? Yes. I just leave them. They're fine. They won't dry out overnight? No. But if you're not going to paint every day, you probably want to put, um, you can either put your palette, whole palette in the freezer. Or if it's small enough, it could be in a, like a 9 by 11 um, container and you could pour water over the top of it. All right, so we're getting, hopefully getting to the point where you're looking at that. Can you see that this is brightening up a little bit? light places going in there. I hope you don't mind my chattering at you and making you answer questions. In your studio, what we see are mostly landscape, a couple of still lifes. Can you talk to us a little bit about your journey as a portrait artist? Um, oftentimes people will ask if I can paint their kids and I've done my grandchildren. 
and I have one whole wall by the dining room that is there each one foot by one foot. Um, and so we've got all the 22 grandchildren painted. It's more like a sketch for them, but anyway, it was fun to do. And they love it, having something of themselves. <laughs> Colors are just everything mixed together. So some people will say you've got a muddy color and it just means you need to start over again and <laughs> mix a cleaner color. Um, some people will say your color is too chalky. And that just means it's the wrong color. It just doesn't look right. Um, work on our center of interest a bit more. At the very least, you get a bigger piece of glass. For the palette? Yeah, you yeah. get a bigger piece of glass so you can I need a very big mix in more areas. Yeah, the nice thing about a glass palette is it just cleans off with a razor blade. So this is going to be our lightest white. And wherever your center of interest is, if you can have the lightest light and darkest dark coming right close in there, it'll be more successful. talked about having this really dark right behind it. The paint's wet, you can get, you know, just draw a couple of little twigs out of it. it look like something's grown in there. expression overwork a painting oh. oh, oh, ask me. <laughs> Can you overwork it's, an oil? If you overwork something, someone didn't tell you when to quit. You just kept going. So that happens. You need somebody to tell you, oh, it's gorgeous just the way it is. I guess that was my next question. How do you actually know when you're done? Yeah, when someone tells you to stop. Who tells you? Somebody. <laughs> Someone in the family. Or it could be a friend. Just say, oh, don't do anything more to it. On this particular painting, there are still some things that I want to do to it. For one thing, I want to use a little more paint. You notice that this is pretty thin, and it'll look more like a painting if I get the paint a little thinner. But to start with, the thin wash is a good way to begin. I would still add a lot more 
foliage down here looking like some things are growing. Maybe add something in here. We don't want to have this be the size of any of these. So we'll make each one different. I might add just some little tree shapes that go over this background here. Maybe make this a little stronger too, where the light is coming from the back and just hitting this little piece of ground right here. I think that would make it more interesting. We were just going to zoom in on one of the paintings I have hanging on the wall. Here, this is the same scene with quite a bit more detail. And I did put the whole river in this one. But this is the kind of thing you can end up with just from the start we got today.